How's everybody doing? My name is Anthony Brian Logan, and today I want to talk about a woman by the name of Linda Sarsour. Now, that name may sound familiar to you. You may have heard about her before, and I did not know too much about her until this most recent incident, which involves her talking about jihad and Donald Trump and some kind of weird clip when she was giving a speech somewhere. I'm not quite sure where she was during this speech, but I'll put that full thing in the box below. But before we get to the clip, I want to tell you a little bit of background about this story now. You'll see in the clip when she talks about jihad and Donald Trump, but the mainstream media and many people that work for or work around the mainstream media basically went a cape for her saying that, oh, she didn't really mean what she was saying as far as what you think she means. And when I say you, I mean conservatives, people that are not woke like this woman is, right? They're saying that us on the right, we're mischaracterizing what she said and she didn't really mean it. It's all about something else. <laughs> I'll talk about something else after we get done with the clip. You'll see it and then you make your own mind up. Don't listen to me and what I say. Just listen to the clip and then you'll understand. But after we get done with that, I'll come back. I'll give you my thoughts on it. And I'll also talk about what she said in a greater context since they say that us on the right did not give her that right. So without further ado, go ahead and roll it. When we stand up to those who oppress our communities, that Allah accepts from us that as a form of jihad, that we are struggling against tyrants and rulers, not only abroad in the Middle East or in the other side of the world, but here in these United States of America where you have fascists and white supremacists and Islamophobes reigning in the White House. Okay, so you saw that. Now, <laughs> I mean, what do you think she was meaning when she said that? Talking about jihad and Middle East and Donald Trump, what do you think she meant? I mean, to me, it was crystal clear. I don't see how anybody could take it any other way. Now, back to the mainstream media or the lamestream media, as I like to call them. They were saying that, oh, she didn't really mean anything about a uh, war because the word jihad does not mean war in Arabic or something else. It means a struggle, a personal struggle. And shame when the conservatives are trying to say that she meant anything threatening by using the word jihad. I mean, come on, let's just be real. First of all, when you look at the word jihad, when you go to Google, I was surprised at Google. Actually, shout out to Google for giving the correct definition of the word, because usually or not going to say usually as of late, Google has been changing certain words like the word fascism, trying to include right wing and stuff like that in the word fascism, even though we all know it's a left wing thing. But I digress. But this word they did not change. They basically said that jihad is a fight against the enemies of Islam. It's right there. I put it on the screen before you. Now, the sub definition says something about a personal struggle against sin. But the word struggle in relation to what Linda Sarsu was saying did not apply because she's talking about against certain people. How can you have a personal struggle against others? We're talking about a personal struggle. That means something that you're dealing with internally. If you're dealing with addiction, if you're dealing with some kind of mental block or whatever it is, something with your mind. It's about you personally dealing with your own issues your status in life, your mental health or whatever, that is not applied to dealing with other people, right? So it doesn't make any sense right there. It's all about a war against the enemies of Islam. Then they said, when I say they, I mean those that want to basically cape for Miss Linda Sarsour. Then they said that, oh, the word jihad does not mean war. But let's just say that it doesn't mean war, which is okay. And let's say that it means struggle. Well, what kind of struggle? What does struggle mean? Struggle could mean that you're being choked to death and you're struggling to get oxygen. Struggle could also mean that you're choking a person to death and you're struggling to keep them right in the center of your hands so they won't move anymore. Right. That could also mean struggle. So they're saying certain things It's like lawyers when they use really wormy language, you know, when they try to talk around stuff to get to a point of legality to where they're not. You know, when they're not really lying, but they're being deceptive by the way that they're speaking. And even if the word jihad just meant struggle and that's it, nothing else, no, no other context, nothing else. Even if it did mean that, which it doesn't. But if it does, then let's talk about Mein Kampf. What does that mean? Mein Kampf literally means my struggle in German. Right. So what if David Duke went to the steps of the Capitol in Washington, D.C. and said something about Mein Kampf? What would the mainstream media say? Would they say that, oh, well, in context, it just means my struggle. It doesn't really mean anything racist. He's not trying to invoke Adolf Hitler. No, they would not say that. They would say 
that he's talking about Adolf Hitler and the Jews is that in the third because of his previous track record. That's what they would say. Right. They would not say anything about it. Mean my struggle, which it does, but they will not say that. And jihad does not mean that it has an alternate meaning that has the word struggle in it. But jihad itself does not mean struggle. It's simple as that. That's takia or lying on the behalf of Linda Sarsour and her supporters who are also Muslim. But you have non-Muslim supporters beyond just the mainstream media who is really kind of faceless when you're talking about it for real. Because you could talk about Time Magazine, this, that, and the third. That's a faceless blame to talk about when you're talking about giving Linda Sarsour a pass or caping or white knighting for her. But then you've had other people like Mark Lamont Hill, who is kind of like similar to Linda Sarsour, but I get to that in a little bit. He came out and defended her on Twitter with a flurry of tweets. I may put some of them on the screen before you and the rest in the box below. Basically, he was chiming in on what was going on and agreed with Time Magazine and Kate for Linda Sarsour talking about, oh, well, Jihad does not really mean that. It means personal struggle. Is that in the third but my question is this, Mark Lamont Hill, what happens if you have a bunch of Islamists in the Middle East that want to come over here and they're waging jihad against Western civilization? Would you be spared? Would you be trying to explain that jihad does not mean what they think it means when they're committing jihad on you? It's just food for thought. I'm not threatening to do. I'm just saying, let's just look at words and what they really mean and in the proper context of how they're said, right? And then back to Linda Sarsour, look at her Twitter history. You're talking about Mark Lamont Hill and his tweets. Look at Linda Sarsour's Twitter history. She's come out and defended female genital mutilation because Ayan Hirsi Ali, who was a former Muslim who comes from Somalia, she's actually a victim of female genital mutilation and she speaks out a lot against it. But Linda Sarsour had a very vile tweet, which I put on the screen before you talking about taking her vagina away. Very disgusting kind of things that she said against Ayan Hirsi Ali. And she also had tweets defending Sharia law, talking about, oh, well, you know, Sharia law, you know, there's no debt on the loan. There's no interest on the loan. Wouldn't that be great if you had no interest loans? And then she said that Sharia law only means, you know, just living an Islamic life. I don't eat pork. I don't drink alcohol. That's all that Sharia law is. But here's the question, Linda Sarsour. What happens if you violate Sharia law? Sharia law does not mean Sharia suggestion. It does not mean Sharia recommendation. It means Sharia law, which means that there is a penalty if you violate the law. So what is the penalty for violating the law of not consuming alcohol, not consuming pork, not engaging in adultery, not viewing pornography? What is the actual penalty for that? How about being raped? The crime of being raped by a man, if you're a woman, what is the penalty for that? You talk about stoning to death, 100 lashes. Oh, man, even worse, being a homosexual. I mean, you might get put on top of a tall building and dropped. That is Sharia law. When you violate the law, there's a penalty. So you can't take things out of context. Talking about context here, Linda Sarsour, you cannot take things out of context, make them appear to be less dangerous, less vile than they actually are. Right. As simple as that. So. I think at the end of the day, anybody with a brain understands what she was saying here. We're talking about jihad and Donald Trump in the Middle East. It was a threat against Donald Trump to commit jihad. And it was a big dog whistle to everybody listening. And really, it was so loud. I think even human beings could hear it. Obviously, you know what she meant. You know what she was saying is not really some kind of rocket scientist type of thing. And as I close here, I think the reason why people are caping for her while they're defending her is because she represents what they want. They want her to be like this beacon of light into Islam. They got this weird affinity for Islam. They love it. They really want to be a part of it. They want to be included in it. She represents the SJW inclusion into Islam, right? She wears shirts talking about stay woke. I've seen them with the black power fist, stuff like that. Even though she's Palestinian, she's not black. And, you know, she wears the hijab, but yet at the same time, she comes off as like, kind of edgy and cool and stuff like that that's what they want that's what they want their islam to be they don't want their islam to be what it actually is in the middle east when you're talking about people that are in isis and stuff like that they don't want to have people being beheaded and drowned in cages and stuff like that she is islamic extremism light something real palatable something real easy to consume for the mainstream media they want to get behind islam because i think at the end of the day they got daddy issues that's the bottom line. They do not have discipline in their lives. They're looking for something to have 
some sort of focus, some sort of balance in their life. But at the same time, they don't want to be looked at as some kind of weird person or somebody that needs to be looked at by the FBI for supporting the extremists that are overseas. You know, the Allah Wattbar, Big Beard. They look at Linda Sarsour as somebody that they can just hitch their wagons to. She's not as threatening as those that have the Big Beard and Scream Allah Wattbar. As simple as that. But at the end of the day, everybody knows what she is. She's a, a, a wolf in wolf's clothing. Anybody that sees anything else is just not being honest. People try to look at her as innocent and all this and that, but it's not. She basically says the same thing that those in the Middle East that are extremists and those also in Europe that are extremists. She says the same things they say, but in a softer way that's more palatable for a Western audience and more palatable for the left that wants to pretty much get in bed with Islam. So that's pretty much all I got to say about it. What do you think? Do you think Linda Sarsour was most certainly advocating violence against Donald Trump and the administration? Do you think that she should be brought up on charges? Because at the end of the day, I mean, you can't threaten the president. So should there be charges? Do you think I'm being a racist, a sexist, a xenophobe or Islamophobe or any other obic ob or is that you can think of? Now, if that's your assertion, please tell me why. I'm just going off of what I see. I mean, really, I think anybody with a pair of eyes in the brain can see and hear what she said. It was plain as day. Anybody that thinks anything differently, I think it's just not being honest with themselves or anybody else. But whatever your comments are, let me know in the comments below. And that's all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share and subscribe. Peace.